guys, Steve Walbach, your friendly public adjuster. I, I'm talking to you today. I started to go in this subject on my last video, and um, I wanted to uh, follow through with this. Uh, you have what we call popcorn ceilings. You also have lead paint. Now, are you aware that, and I might have the date a little bit off, but let's say for either 1980 or perhaps 1970. I have to look that up real quick, but let's just go with 1970. That if you had popcorn ceilings put in place, that is an extremely high possibility that there's asbestos in that on your ceiling. And when things get damaged, such as if you get something wet, excuse me, you didn't see that, did you? Okay. Um, there's that that helps release things and that's something that needs to come down because the plaster or sheetrock that was up there and if it's from the 70s it's a good chance it may actually be plaster uh, that would need to be cut out and repatched and you know that then that means that that popcorn ceiling needs to come down and if it is asbestos we're just not getting up there with scrapers and scrape this thing off and it just the dust falls uh, there's got to be a regular procedure and there's a certain way that it's explained when you're handling asbestos items of how to take care of it we don't people we don't want people getting asbestosis uh, which breathing that in your lungs is not recommended by anybody as far as lead paint goes again if you have houses that you know were, were from such and such there's always that possibility if rooms haven't been painted over you could still have a situation where you'd have lead based paint so that's something you need to worry about also uh, normally in most situations you're going to have where paint's been painted over a couple times uh, if something starts peeling and you start uncovering several layers the under layers right the deeper ones may actually contain lead in them uh, which would not be a good thing right so that, that's that's uh, my little uh, blurb I'd like to pass along to you guys uh, and that's simply be careful of ceilings that may have a popcorn coating to it you know that design that was big way back uh, I don't think that's traditionally used as much anymore it may also be a preference too and Hey, it's your home. You can do it, decorate it any way you want. But uh, if it is old and you're getting damaged there, you really need to be careful. Uh, and the only way we can really determine things the proper way is to take a sample and take it to the lab. That's that's the way you would determine that. Uh, looking at it, smelling it, tasting it. Well, I don't recommend you taste it. Uh, you really shouldn't be smelling it either. But uh, nonetheless, that's what we're dealing with. So. I hope that uh, you've, uh, you'll, you'll, learn, you'll pay heed to this and that if you do know someone that may have an issue right now where uh, their, 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 bath, their bathtub overflowed and the ceiling underneath is a popcorn ceiling and it's got water damage to it and some chunks have fallen down, well, now you got your ready-made sample, right? Let's get that to, or call me first, let me come in, take a look at things so we can get a claim started. Uh, I need to f check out your policy, make sure that you're covered for these types of instances. And from that point, we will then take it and get it analyzed. And if it comes back with certain parts uh, or that are asbestos, we're going to have to deal with it a little bit differently than if not. Uh, but, uh, you know, we don't get alarmed. Uh, let's uh, methodically go through the process and we'll, we'll get you through it. Guys, appreciate you listening to me. This is Steve Walbach, your friendly public adjuster. Uh, if you liked what you heard, would you give me one of these? If it was so-so, then you got to give me one of those. Uh, please share it. And of course, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Until next time, God bless you.